I know this is going to sound crazy, but we have like 15 minutes to film a podcast before something really incredibly strange happens. So here are three tips for influencers and creators who are starting their business. Oh my gosh, are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Social Media Lawcast. I am your host, social media attorney, Ethan Wall. And with me is my friend and co-host, Sean Biasquale. Hey, Sean. Ethan, I don't have time for pleasantries. I've got some very important meetings uh, to, to, to attend. We've got to do this quickly. Now, I understand that I've given you a lot of time constraints. Needless to say, I need your absolute favorite and best three tips for creators and influencers that are starting out. We don't have a ton of time. I cannot stress that enough. So you need to take charge here. And you, I, I normally, I know I kind of like lead things along. What are your thrips? Your tips? I won't ask too many questions in between them. What are your tips? Are you, are you prepared to do this? I feel like you're Doc from Back to the Future right now. And I am Marty. Just like, cool. Let's jump in the DeLorean. Let's go. Um. All right. All right. So, well, so then in that case, I now officially present to you Ethan Wall's tips for creators and influencers. This will now officially be my favorite episode we've ever done because of that sound bite. But whatever. <laughs> We're short on time. Uh, what's the first tip? If you're an influencer or creator and you want to be doing this to make a living, then you should be running your accounts like you're running a business. Mm. One of the biggest mistakes that I see, people have gigantic followings, they want to partner with brands, but they're kind of just relying on the fact that they've got a bunch of followers and that they're a creator, but they don't have they don't take the mindset of this is a business, I should have a company, I should have contracts, so they're not set up legally to protect themselves when things go wrong. And when big brands come to them, they're just not set up and they're not ready to actually work for these big campaigns because they're not running their accounts like they're running a business. So at what point does a start look? You start with nothing, right? <clears throat> do you start out of the gate without even knowing you're going to have any success? Do you put all this time and effort and money into making it a business? Or do you just start making videos? Or, or when do you know? Yeah, it's hard to say. There's no black and white line. But yes, you're right on the one hand that to have the idea that I want to be a popular influencer or creator and then spend thousands of dollars hiring lawyers, creating companies, opening bank accounts, that sounds a little bit silly. Um, however, going too far down the line and you're now having to kind of redo what you've done before. You have to scramble when that brand comes to you and says, what's the name of your business? Review this contract. You're not set up. You don't know what to do. So it's mm. kind of just like any business is you kind of see, does this thing have legs? Is it going to be successful? Have I built a big following? Have I invested time and energy in like buying a camera, getting video equipment? Do I want tax credits for that? Like I'm going to need to have a business. Have, have mm. I worked with a brand? Or two, have I started to get some deals? Now I know, okay, this thing's growing. This thing's going to be happening for me. Now I should run it like a business. And really what that kind of means is setting up a simple LLC. Having a company like Sean DePasquale Creator LLC or Funny Vids Los Angeles LLC, it doesn't matter. But having a company, having a bank account for your company and having a basic legal contract or basic strategy of who you're going to go to is really what separates I'm popular on the internet and make cool videos. And I'm a creator that brands and other people should part with. And I'm established and I'm ready to handle these bigger contracts. Interesting. That's I think that's a fair answer to the question. And I think it's good guidance to people starting out, uh, influencers, creators, um, who are in that unsure stage. Cause that's the hardest part, right? In the beginning is like, well, I, do I protect myself? Do I hire a lawyer, even though I'm not making any money that, that that's, that's tough. Um, so I think that was really solid, sound advice. Um, aside from starting the LLC, um, uh, is there, uh, any other like early steps for under the banner of treat, treat this like a business? Yes. And I'll kind of give it as tip two and I'll bring it together. And that is 
sign a contract or have a basic influencer or creator or services contract because that again kind of separates you just as a popular person on the internet and you as a business. Now, why is it important to kind of lump into the beginning stuff of what you need? When you do business with somebody, let's say you and I wanted to do business and you wanted to hire me as a creator for your brand and I we can make it. Why? I mean, honestly, I don't like your work ethic. No, I'm just you kidding. Know, I'm just kidding. You're you're an obsessive worker. You make me look like the laziest person on the planet. You're hired. Okay. You're hired. Yes. Yeah, but mark it my while I go text my therapist. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So um so when we do business, we can make a deal via a DM. We can make a deal via text. We can make it right. a handshake deal. Like, hey, sure. create this video for me. Uh, I'll pay you five hundred dollars. That is a legal contract so long as both of us are understanding what the deal is. Problem is, it's a shitty contract because when I make the video and you don't pay and you're like, ha see you later, sucker. I didn't like the video. It didn't meet my expectations. It wasn't long enough. It didn't do what you wanted to do. And I want to do mm -hmm. something about it. Then I'm going to have to sue you. Am I going to sue you over $500? How am I going to prove that deal unless it's written down somewhere? And so- Having a company and having mm -hmm. a contract is really important because let's now say that that the situation is reversed, all right? Mm -hmm. I hired you for $500 to make a video for me. You made the video. I didn't pay. What happens? You can sue me personally, meaning you can sue Ethan Wall because I don't have a company mm -hmm. that I'm doing business under. So you can come after my personal assets and there's no contract. So literally, you can go after my house, my car, my Nintendo, whatever. You can really shake me down and ruin my life because I'm doing business as what's called a sole proprietor and you're coming after me. But once you have a company that's set up correctly, like an LLC, which costs a few hundred bucks to set up, now you have insulated or separated yourself from liability. If the deal goes bad, they can only come after the assets of the business. If there's only 20 bucks in the bank account, you can be like, hey, look, Go after my 20 bucks. You know, I'm sorry, let's work this out, but there's really nothing there. And having a contract is going to set forth what the terms of the deal are so that your expectations in terms of creating this video is spelled out. And it also can resolve how do disputes get resolved? Because it might say, look, you can't sue me. The contract says we've got to try to work it out. And if not, we've got to go to a mediator or something to be able to resolve it. So having a contract, having a company at the outset, two smart legal tips. Yeah, I can actually because uh, uh, we're we're doing great on time. We're already on tip number two out of three. Um, I can actually give a, a quick anecdote that backs up what Ethan was saying. Now, this happened to me, but I was on the "Hey, I'm owed money" side, okay. And the person who owed me money was a gentleman who hired me for services, but lettering services. Um, I did the work. I lettered the thing. I sent him the thing. Okay, now pay me my money. He did not. This went back and forth for like two months. So I finally enlisted an attorney and the attorney said to him, look, man, you, you don't even have a business. You just hired this person. So we will come after your wages and your house and your car and all this stuff over under $5,000 we're talking about. So figure out a payment plan and pay my client. Point being, had that guy had a business, even spent 100, 200, 300 even on just having an LLC, as you're saying, he would have been able to say, hey man, I don't make any money with this thing. Like, I'm sorry that I hired you and didn't have any money to pay you out of my business, but like, it is what it is. The business hired you and the business is broke. You know, um, and that at least would have saved his ass. It would have made it more difficult for me, obviously. I mean, I, you know, I was glad to have the leverage. Um, but, you know, yeah, it would have certainly protected him. So regardless of the side of the deal that you're on, we're not saying go out and screw people by no. creating a company and having no assets. That's just dumb, yeah. you know, but what it, what it does mean is it's also not smart from a business perspective to be doing business as yourself, even if the sole purpose of the company is me as a creator making popular, fun, swimsuit, cool music videos, whatever it is that they are, mm -hmm. having a company, and it could be 
my, my, my you know, Ethan Wall LLC, Sean DePasquale LLC. Mm-hmm. Usually you can create an LLC online. It's super quick. In Florida, it costs you about 150 bucks to set this up. You yeah. hired our law firm, cost you about $500 for us to do all the paperwork for you, plus the government's filing fee to set this up. So it's not that expensive and it's just good business to do it. And then you got to create a bank account for your business or else the business is a shell company and it can you can get past it from a liability perspective. But really creating let's, a company, <laughs> having your that for our episode on how to hide money in shell corporations. <laughs> That'll be for a future episode. Stay tuned, folks. We will eventually get to it. The perfect plan for hiding all of your embezzled or and or stolen and or drug monies. Um, but for now, Not we're talking about episode. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? No, no. I mean, we could talk about it, but no, no, don't do it. But but listen for future episodes in case we do talk hypothetically about it. Okay, there's Damn. time. Time. There's only four oh, minutes left. Four, you're whatever. Right, you're right. Okay. <laughs> Tip number three. What have you got? All right. Uh, you got to if you are a content creator or an influencer, your value to other people is your content and your profiles. So you better mm. protect that content because once you get popular, people are going to steal it. And mm-hmm. if you don't protect your content, there's not much you can do when people steal it. So, so this like watermarkings, is that what you're talking about? Like watermarking the videos? That's part of it. So there's really kind of two aspects. There's, okay. there's trademarks and there's copyrights. And mm-hmm. so if you have a brand, let's call it like the, I don't know, the swizzle stick creator, and you're really good at promoting different types of straws, that's your mm-hmm. thing. Um, trademarking that so that when other people start creating fake accounts for the swizzle stick creator, you can get those accounts taken down. If you don't have Mm. a trademark, you're not gonna be able to get them taken down. Somebody else can create an account using your name. There's not much you can do about it. Second aspect, copyright. You can protect a whole bunch of photos and videos, up to 750 photos in a single copyright application, up to 10 videos in a single Mm. copyright application. So copywriting, it's the best, but as a new creator, that's going to be expensive, potentially. It's a few hundred dollars if you do it yourself, less than a thousand mm-hmm. bucks if you do it with a lawyer. So doing things like watermarking your content, mm-hmm. um, having your content owned by your company is also good because mm-hmm. now it's a business asset and your business can go after these people. So there's reasonable steps at the outset, like a watermark. And then as you start making money, you're having close to hundreds of thousands of followers your content's valuable to you. Now you got to take the next step and copyright your content so that when someone steals it, you can either A, send a takedown notice to the social media sites or B, have a lawyer write a legal demand letter saying, my client has a copyright. You owe him at least $7,500 because you have removed his watermark and put it Mm. on your profile. I can walk into court tomorrow and win this case quickly. So settle this, take it down, pay my client money, and we can move on. But without protecting your content, you don't have legal, good legal remedies. That's a great, that, that last tip is really, really, really strong. I actually have a lot of um, uh, artist friends who I will share this episode with who have gone through a similar experience where they're posting their art weekly on Instagram. And then all of a sudden their art ends up getting shared by an account with quadruple the views, but their water tag is missing and, and, or their watermark is missing and their profile name is cropped out of the image. And, and, and now their art is just out there getting views for this other person. Um, and I don't know that any of my friends, uh, uh, have considered red, you know, considering their art as a business and making a business and then considering that as business assets. So this is great. Uh, we are right on time. We unfortunately don't have any more time for any tips this week. That ends the segment. Ethan gives you tips for creators and influencers. We'll play the closing up theme. Follow the Social Media Law Cast for more Social Media Law tips, news for creators, entrepreneurs, and small businesses. And for more other tips, follow us on social media by looking for the Social Media Law Firm. Oh my God, I don't know if you hear that, Sean. The helicopters are coming. We have oh, to go. This time. was great. See ya. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.